Hello everyone and hello everyone again as there was one missing yesterday. Uh, I have no idea why it happened. I hope now everything is fixed with my recording software and we can get on with the show. So this is a game from round six, uh, King Ding versus Jan Nepomniši, the leader of the tournament. But before we check out this game, I would just like to mention something about the game Amidyaro versus Aranyan that we already covered uh, two, two rounds ago. Uh, in this position, a lot of you asked that after bishop to f1 that bishop to e2 is not in fact winning uh, because the queen can capture the bishop. And I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this line. It is a very important line, so uh, let's just uh, go over it now. Uh, you said after queen captures, uh, it's not enough for, for black, but it actually is. After rook captures, bishop captures, white is up a piece, but you push a4 and the pass pawns are simply too strong. Uh, for example, you play bishop c4, try and keep an eye on, on d8 to square, rook d8 is coming. You cannot trade. If you trade, then just b5, b3, uh, b4, b3, and it's game over. Then the a pawn will, will queen, and it's uh, not, not, nothing you can do. Uh, you will have to keep an eye on too many squares, and it will be impossible. So after rook b1, you avoid the trade. Now rook d2 is coming, threatening rook c2 to fall by rook c1 check, which will be winning. King f1, and now you get rook to c2, preparing this. Uh, bishop to a2, now okay, rook c1 check can be met with king e2, as the bishop is now guarding the rook, but now you push b5, and here white is helpless. King e1, you'll push b4, king d1, b3, uh, and it's all over. Whatever you do, you, let's say you capture here, this rook uh, will not be able to move for the rest of the game. And now there are a lot of winning ideas here for black. The simplest one is just bring your king over here, since the white rook cannot move. Bring it over to a2, win the rook, move the king, uh, queen, the pawn, and its mate. So that's basically the easiest way to do it. But uh, I, I just wanted to cover that as uh, a lot of you were interested in what happens if queen captures. So getting back to this game, Ding versus Nepo. Uh, it's round six, like I said, Nepo still in the lead, uh, a full point ahead of Magnus Carlsen and Wesley So, so let's see what happens here. Uh, we do have uh, a nice photo of the two gentlemen here. There we have it, both of them uh, deep in thought. So let's just enjoy that for a moment. Uh, and now let's uh, get on with the show. Uh, so Ding has the white pieces and he opens with c4. So the English opening with e5 by Nepo, g3, preparing to fianca to the light square bishop, knight to f6, and now bishop to g2. Uh, with d5 by Nepo, uh, uh, we have c captures on d5, knight captures on d5, and knight to f3. Uh, a line Ding very often plays with the white pieces, and now comes knight to c6. If you're thinking about pushing the e4 pawn here, uh, don't think about stuff like that, because, you know, queen a4 check will just pick up the pawn, and you've blundered your pawn here, so not something you want to do. Uh, so, knight to c6 here, and we have castles by Ding. Uh, and here, there already is a game Ding played in this line. He played against Wesley So in the Norway, uh, Aldebox Norway Championship, but in the blitz section, uh, where uh, Wesley played uh, knight back to b6. But here, Nepo goes bishop to e7. It's not a new move or anything, it's just a, a different line. We have d4 by Ding. Uh, and now you can push the e4 pawn. So we have e4 attacking the knight, knight to e5 now threatening to win the e4 pawn here, and now f5, defending the pawn. So still the main line, knight captures on c6, b captures, and now queen to c2, putting pressure on the c6 pawn here. Uh, and here uh, you can choose to defend the pawn in a, in a lot of different ways. Queen to d6 is the most usual way people defend this pawn. But here Nepo goes knight to b4, attacks the queen, and also the knight now nicely guards the c6 pawn. Bishop guards the knight, so all, all is well here. We have queen to a4, again, keeping this pressure here, now threatening a3 to kick away the knight and, uh, well, win material. And now bishop to d7. And here, there is one game that uh, reached this position in 2001 in the European uh, in the European Rapid Championship in the playoffs, uh, uh, Vasily Ivanchuk had this position against uh, Alexei Shurov. Uh, uh, he, uh, Chucky played knight to c3 and he was able to win this game uh, with the white pieces. But here we have a3 by Ding and it is a new move in this position. So okay, as of move 12, we have a completely new game. So here uh, Nepo has to decide, does he move the knight or does he first play c5, make some trades in the center. Uh, he decides to move away with the knight. If he goes c5, okay, then there's a discovery on the queen. You move the queen, but then again you have to move the knight and white will capture. You're going to play c6 and you get this position, which is perfectly fine for black. But Nepo decides, uh, you know, uh, once you push a pawn, you, you can never unpush it. So uh, he waits for the right moment. Knight to d5. Uh, and now knight to c3 by Ding. Continues development, and again, do you push c5 here? 
you can, although it doesn't win anything since queen b3 comes with an attack on the knight. And after you trade here, queen captures. Uh, now the queen nicely guards the, the d4 pawn you can capture here. And after black castles, it's a, it's a nice position for both white and black. Uh, but Nepo still doesn't want to make any, you know, concrete decisions. First, bishop to d6. Now with ideas of, uh, well, maybe even castling, pushing f4, starting an attack on the king side. Uh, and uh, Ding doesn't allow it. Ding says, okay, our king is still in the center of the board. I'm the one that's opening lines here. So f3, threatening to capture on e4. Uh, we have e captures on f3, bishop captures on f3, and now knight to b6, pushing the queen back. Uh, we have queen to b3 now, preventing the black king from castling king's side. And now queen to f6, going after the d4 pawn and leaving option of maybe even castling queen side if needed. But if not, uh, the king can always just, just move if, you know, trouble arises. So uh, what do you play here? Uh, the d4 pawn is under attack and Ding of course defended it with bishop to e3. Who wouldn't? It's such a lovely developing move. Uh, defends uh, the d4 pawn, uh, develops the bishop. But there is one uh, beautiful move here that is actually rook to f2. It's something no one would play but it's just uh, beautiful when, when you see why it works. You just you can give up the d4 pawn and black cannot capture it. Uh, if black captures it then you get bishop captures on c6 threatening the rook here and then after bishop captures queen e6 check is now both the queen and the bishop are away from the e6 square and now uh you're i mean you're not doing great as black here because if you go for example to d8 then bishop g5 just wins the game you either have to give up material here bishop e7 or you give up the queen but either way you're just uh you know uh, dead lost here and if you don't after queen e6 if you go to the f file now you can capture an f5 not yet as the rook is pinned but you just kick away the queen and after something let's say queen c4 you want to trade queens rook f5 will be mate so uh, a very sneaky line on, on how to react to queen to f6 this rook to f2 move uh, but of course uh, you know ding played the normal human line with bishop to e3 with Queen to g6, now not allowing bishop to h5 check, but also preparing to get the, the rook into the game. Also, maybe with ideas of, uh, of starting an attack on the king side, maybe even h5, h4. And it's uh, very unlikely that the black king will be uh, castling uh, king side. So, bishop to f2, Ding now says, okay, your, your king is still in the center of the board. I'm ready to open lines. I want to play e4. And here you could castle queenside, but it could be a bit dangerous. d5 would come, uh, now opening more lines towards the black king. If c5 closing them, then a4 is coming with a5. Uh, knight can come to b5. It's just going to be a, a very hard position to defend for Nepo. So here, after this uh, bishop to f2, we have h5. Nepo starts an attack on the king's side. And, uh, well, uh, if you look at this position, who do you think is the side that should be attacking in this position? Uh, I'll just let you, you know think about that for a moment. Uh, so Nepo says, okay, your king is still in the center, I'm opening up lines, uh, and Nepo ignores him. Nepo continues the attack on the king side with h4, and now e captures on f5. As the queen is under attack, you have to react to this with queen captures on f5, and now rook 8 to e1 with check. Uh, so you have to move the king, like we said, if anything happens, you can always go king to d8, and now knight to e4. The bishop on d6 is a strong attacking piece, so of course, uh, Ding wants to get rid of it. Uh, with a, and, well, uh, here, Nepo played queen to g6, uh, putting more pressure on the g file, but you could also just trade everything here. Uh, pawn captures, bishop captures, bishop captures, pawn captures, uh, but the problem for black is that it's not all that clear how to continue the attack, and the white pieces are just so wonderfully placed. The king is still in the center. Unless you do something about it, you're never getting this rook into the game. So it's much harder for Nepo to play this position. If queen h7 with a threat of checkmate, rook f2 uh, just blocks everything. The bishop here is such a nice defender. You don't have good ways of continuing this attack. So after knight e4, we have queen to g6 by Nepo instead, keeping everything on the board. But now it's just a better trade for Ding as he gets to trade the knight for the bishop. And uh, he is going to be left with the bishop pair. We have knight captures here, c captures, and now d5, just, uh, you know, still uh, wanting to open lines, of course, that's what you want to do. 
uh, Nepo not interested, he wants to close the lines with c5, uh, and now comes a4, preparing to push a5 and kick away the knight, uh, and what do you do here? Well, you can't push a5 or something like that, as the knight would be hanging, so here Nepo just grabs the pawn with bishop captures on a4, and now Ding achieved what he wanted, now he can play queen to a3, and now after b4 there will be no more ways for black to prevent, uh, you know, just busting open the position. Uh, so, rook to e8, Nepo gets this rook into the game, he's hoping to get some uh, king to c7 and the other rook into the game action, and now Ding continues with his plan, b4. Now he's ready to capture here, and then the lines for the bishop pair will be open. Uh, here, if you push c4, you don't really gain anything, uh, then b5 is coming, and then all the lines are open, and it will be very hard, very hard to, to, to defend this with black. So, uh, rook to c8 by Nepo, and now comes b captures on c5. Uh, first, Nepo throws in a nice uh, Zwischenzug, we have rook captures on e1, rook captures on e1, h captures on g3, h captures on g3, and d captures on c5. And now, how do you continue uh, this game with, uh, with white? Well, you want to capture on c5, but first you have to further defend the g3 pawn, as you cannot move the bishop. So, king to g2, you prepare bishop captures here. Uh, Nepo played queen, uh, queen to c2, now with uh, a double, uh, uh, well, he has to defend the c5 pawn twice, and now you're ding in this position, what do you play here? Uh, feel free to pause the video and continue the attack with white while I have a nice sip of my water. For those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. Uh, you are an excellent threatener of mate in one, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, Queen to e3. Now you're already threatening mate in one, and black has to decide how to defend. It's not all that easy to defend. There are some ways you can go bishop d7, king c7, uh, rook to c7. Nepo go decides for rook to c7, and he tries to create, uh, well, an escape route for the king. But with this bishop nicely on this diagonal, I mean, who are who are we kidding? d6 is coming at some point. Uh, we have queen to e6, not allowing Nepo's king to escape. Uh, also now ideas like g4 followed by bishop to h4 check are possible, which pretty much ends the game. So Nepo has to make some sort of a escape route for his king. He goes rook to d7, maybe trying to get his king to c7, but it's getting uh, harder and harder. With d6 not allowing it, uh, also now this diagonal for the bishop is open, and here we have king to c8. Uh, and here, again, feel free to pause the video and try to find the, the crushing blow for white here. Uh, there are a lot of winning moves, but one is a, a forced uh, checkmate in six, so feel free uh, to, <laughs> to do it uh, while pausing the video. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. Uh, you have just beaten Jan Nepomnishi, the leader of the Croatian uh, Grand Chester in Zagreb. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, rook to h1. Uh, with the pawn covering c7, the bishop covering this uh, entire diagonal, there is no stopping rook to h8. Uh, the only sort of defense is king b8, making room for the knight here, but then you just play rook h8 check, uh, you will block with the knight, knight to c8, and now after queen to d5, there is no more defending uh, mate uh, on a8. So Nepo, of course, uh, did not want to try anything here, even though Nepo got out of some really crazy positions, uh, not only in this tournament, but in every tournament, as it's just uh, he, the way the way he plays the game. Uh, here, he decided not to, not to do anything after this rook to h1 move, as, of course, uh, everything loses. So yeah, an excellent victory for Ding, and a nice way for him to get back into the tournament, but as for Jan Nepomnishi, it means that he's no longer the sole leader of the tournament. Uh, we're now gonna check out, well, first let's check out this uh, very nice photo, here you have it, uh, Nepo being a, a true gentleman of the game, uh, offering a, a handshake to Ding, resigning the game with a smile on his face. You know, that's, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's how real chess is played, you always have to be a gentleman, and here you can see that Nepo, Nepo is one such uh, dude. So, uh, there you have it, and also we're now going to show the standings, I decided not to show them in the previous video, maybe not to, to spoil it, as no one actually knew that Nepo lost the game. Uh, so, here they are, uh, now uh, it's a bit of a different, Magnus and Wesley caught up to Nepo, now it's Carlson, Nepo and Wesley with 4 points, uh, 3 people with 3.5, Fabiano Corona, Ding Lira now after this win with uh, uh, over Nepo, and Levon Aronian with 3.5, then with 2.5 we have Maxim Vashiel Lagrav, Vishwanathan Anand and Sergei Karyakin, uh, and then we have uh, with 2 point Anish Giri, Shahriar Mamidyarov and Hikaru Nakamura. 
uh, after losing the game to Magnus in the video you've seen, uh, well, yesterday. So, uh, where did Nepo go wrong in this game? Nowhere really, it was just a series of uh, suboptimal moves, uh, move after move, and then in the end, D Ding just got a position that was uh, overwhelming. But uh, I, th I think the, the quote above the board is uh, more, more than sufficient for this game, that it's dangerous to maintain equality at the cost of placing the pieces passively, something I, I uh, <laughs> learned uh, you know, uh, playing stronger players, uh, you know, you think you will have a, a draw or something if you just have equal material on the board, uh, even uh, having your pieces placed passively, but it's never <laughs> the case, you will always lose that game, so, uh, you know, it's better to give up some material to gain activity than, than to suffer passively. And here, Nepo really struggled to, to get his, uh, well, pieces into the game, and the thing just capitalized in the end. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game, uh, uh, King Ding versus Jan Nepomnishi. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Jeff Graves and uh, David Mumf Mumford for his son Tom. He, it's his uh, son's uh, Tom's uh, birthday, so he said that he, he made a contribution in honor of his son's birthday. So uh, I wish you a very happy birthday, Tom. Hope you have a great celebration and hope you uh, win many, many chess games uh, in, the, in the days to come. So yeah, uh, like I said, uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, uh, continuing the coverage of this lovely tournament, checking up on your suggestions, and doing what we usually do. Uh, thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.